Hey guys, it's Nurse Mike here with SimpleNursing.com. Today we're breaking down bipolar medications, lithium, valpuric acid, and more, including all the key side effects, teaching tips, and all the NCLEX warnings that love to show up on exams. So for all my members, be sure to grab these mental health study guides inside the membership area, and let's make this info stick. Now for the bipolar medications. First on the list is carbamazepine. Indication is obviously bipolar, but also given for seizures. And a big one here is for treatment of trigeminal neuralgia, basically neuropathic pain. Now the side effect, number one is leukopenia. We have low WBCs, which means increased risk or massive infection. So the key word here is to report fever and sore throat. Guys, that's the most important. Now next is accidental pregnancy. So key words, oral contraceptives are ineffective and will need alternative forms of birth control or birth control methods. Now next is V for valpuric acid. So guys, just think val with a lot of L's. So L for liver toxic, we monitor for jaundice and liver labs, ALTs and ASTs. And L for low platelets, aka thrombocytopenia. We have a big bleed risk. Now, valpuric acid is also not pregnancy safe, and we teach clients not to discontinue abruptly. Be sure to have this study guide handy for this section, so you can follow the content and make this knowledge actually stick. Now for the big mama, lithium. This is the drug to know. Coming up 22% of the time for all psychiatric med questions. So for lithium, it's given over the long-term treatment for both bipolar and schizoaffective disorder. So guys, the memory trick is a lithium battery. Since lithium lasts a long time, and B for bipolar, so remember battery. Now it has a very narrow therapeutic range, 0.6 to 1.2. And the key point here is that toxicity happens over 1.5. So patients at highest risk for toxicity are those with decreased renal function. Remember. Kidneys are the washer machines of the body, washing the blood out from medications and waste. So any decrease in real function usually sets the stage for toxicity. So be cautious with patients in kidney disease and also elderly patients who naturally have decreased kidney function. Again, the key signs for the kidneys are creatinine over 1.3 means bad kidney, and urine 30 mLs per hour or less means kidneys are in distress. And the signs and symptoms of tinnitus, ringing of the ears, usually indicates some type of kidney malfunction. So we use the acronym LITH for all the key points that are highly tested. L for levels over 1.5 equals huge toxicity. So blood levels are drawn regularly to maintain that therapeutic dose and may take up to three weeks. So guys, a common test question is lithium at a therapeutic level? If yes, then continue at the current dose. Now I is for increasing fluid and sodium. Since lithium lets go of the fluid. Guys, the big key point here and the contraindication is we can't give lithium during dehydration and low sodium, that hyponatremia below 135 microequivalents per liter. Guys, Always question any prescription the doctor writes if the patient has low sodium or dehydration. Second thing is never restrict sodium and water. Keyword here, do not limit sodium intake. Since sodium swells the body with water, we need to avoid that toxicity here. Now a typical question is a patient at highest risk for toxicity. Usually a patient with a stomach flu, including diarrhea and vomiting. Now, the big key words here are due to massive dehydration. Again, always reviewing low sodium. If below 135, we're reporting to the doctor or HCP. And we teach patients to avoid the dehydration by teaching them to drink one to three liters of water per day and limit diuretics, including foods that have diuretic properties like coffee, colas, and teas. Guys, we want more fluid in and less fluid out. So again here, no diuretics like furosemide or hydrochlorothiazide, and no anticholinergic medications like the respiratory med ipratropium because they dry you out. Again, we think PMs 
you can't pee with them. Now, our T is for toxic signs, when to report to the HCP. So, guys, write these keywords down. Report excessive urination and extreme thirst. Guys, these both lead to dehydration and more toxicity. Now, vomiting and diarrhea, which can add more dehydration and, again, more toxicity. And third, neuromuscular excitability, like tremors and myclonic jerks, or coarse hand tremors, and even ataxia, confusion, or agitation. Guys, the number one intervention by the nurse is always to increase the fluids. Now, H is for hold the NSAIDs, like ibuprofen and naproxen. Remember, NSAIDs are really bad for the entire body, especially the kidneys. So the key point NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, they decrease renal blood flow, increasing the risk for toxicity. So guys, we need to avoid those, and if the patient wants to take it, we need further teaching. So use acetaminophen, like Tylenol, instead. Now, common expected side effects that we don't need to report. Guys, the dry mouth and the thirst. So teach patients to use ice chips, gum, or sugarless candy, and drink plenty of fluids, and also do oral hygiene. Now, drowsiness and fatigue. Teach patients to avoid driving as well as hazardous activities until that improves. And we have weight gain, so we teach proper diet and exercise and decreased appetite if the patient has weight loss. It's anorexia and mild GI upset. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.